Hello my fans. So some persons requested that I should make a video on dimension analysis in physics. So I've decided to make that video. I'm going to simplify it to even an 8 year old can answer it. So anytime you see it in your exam, just know it's a bonus question. So stay tuned together and we learn together. If this is your first time watching my video, my name is Excellence Simplified. And do well to click on the subscribe button because my channel is stocked with academic content that will help you succeed in your academic endeavor so click on the subscribe button and subscribe let's go all right so dimension analysis anytime you hear dimension analysis we are relating that substance any substance at all with the fundamental quantities now fundamental quantities are any uh, a, a fundamental quantity is any quantity that can stand on its own i don't want to speak too much grammar in this video now let's go into practical in dimension analysis, basically, we are relating a quantity with mass, length, and time. So, that's simple put. We have other fundamental quantities, but these are the three main ones. Mass, length, and time. Now, you can be given something like uh, power. Or, or let, let's start from a, a simple one. You can be given something like speed. And you are asked to find the dimension of speed. Anytime you are asked to find the dimension of anything, the first thing you have to do is to know the formula of that thing. So if you know the formula, you can actually get your answer. So speed, you know speed is what? Distance over time, right? Distance over time. And you agree with me that distance, distance from year to year is the length from year to year, right? So distance is length and time is t. So if you don't want to write it like this, the same thing as writing L, T, T was done, right? If you want to bring it up, you put minus 1. So anytime you want to bring it up, you put minus 1. So this thing you have here is called the dimension of what? Of speed. You see how simple it is, Abi? This is the dimension of speed. If you are asked to find the dimension of, uh, say, force, what I told you is, know the what? Know the formula. What is the dimension of force? Force is what? Mass times what? Acceleration, right? Mass times acceleration. I remember your MLT. M is what? Mass. So I'm not doing anything to this mass. I'll leave it like that. Times acceleration. What is acceleration? Acceleration is what? Change in velocity all over what? Time, right? Change in velocity. So velocity over time. But now, I'll come back to this. Though. But now, if you are asked to find the dimension for velocity, velocity is what? Displacement. Displacement over time, right? That's velocity. I know displacement is distance to, and distance is what? Length, right? So length over time. So you see LT minus 1. So velocity and speed, they have the same uh, the same units, the same the same dimension. So we've seen velocity as lt my raised by minus one. It means I can replace that velocity, this thing here. So I'll be having m times instead of v now I have lt minus one. Then all over t again. Let me make this capital letter. So you notice that if I want to do that again, uh, force will be equal to mass times if i want to bring this t up remember the laws of indices l t minus one this is this one up this one here the power is one ab if you don't write any power there the power is simply one if i want to take it up there is division here right so the law of indices if the basis are the same and it is division what do you do you subtract the powers right so now be minus one so i'll be having m l t this m l t minus one minus one is what minus two so this is the dimension for force this is the dimension for force so basically i'll be taking more examples so we see different scenarios where you can see equations on that all right but hope you are following hope you are following now let's take another example if you are asked for the dimension if you are asked for the dimension of power or let's say work let's start with work the dimension for work you know work the formula for work is what force times what times distance 
force times distance. We've seen the dimension for force. We just finished that now. Force is mass times acceleration. So force is mass times acceleration. Then times distance here. So this we imply that mass times acceleration. We've seen the uh, unit of acceleration as LT minus 2. The dimension for acceleration, LT raised to minus 2. Then times distance is in length. So this will be m. We have two lengths here. So since it's multiplication, you add the powers one plus one, two. So l square t raised to the power minus two. This is the dimension for work. If you are asked to find the dimension for power, power, you know, just know the formula. Power is what work done over time taken. And work done, we've calculated work done as what? M L squared T raised to the minus 2. Then all over time, T. And according to the laws of indices, if the bases are the same, you take one. Then since it's division, you subtract the power. So it'll be M L squared T minus 2 minus 1. So this will be M L squared T minus 2 minus 1 is what? Minus 3. So this is the dimension for power. If you are asked to find a dimension for energy, energy is same thing as work. So the same thing as work, which is what? ML square T minus 2. Energy and work is the same thing. All right. But now, if you are asked for pressure, I will do this last, then we'll take some calculation. If you are asked for pressure, pressure is force per unit area, right? We've seen force before. This force mass times acceleration. So we've seen force before as m l t raised to the minus two. That's force all over area. Area is length times length. I mean length times breadth. So l square is for. Uh, so now in this case here, you want to bring this up. So this will be m l. Since they are the same basis and division, you subtract the power. So one minus two, right? Then t minus 2. So here we'll be having ML. 1 minus 2 is what? Minus 1. T minus 2. So that's the unit of pressure. So basically, you just know the formula and you go about the manipulation. Now there are some calculation questions they used to bring under this. Let me take one of such calculation questions. So when you see it in the exam, you know what to do. All right, before I take the calculation, let me just do this one. Uh, if you are asked uh, to find the dimension of impulse, impulse is simply force times time, right? I know force, we've seen force as mass times acceleration, then times time, is it not? So since the unit are the same, minus 2 plus 1 will give us what? Minus 1, right? So this is the dimension for impulse. All right, so you can play around with other ones. Let me take the calculation now. All right, sometimes you see questions like this. Don't be afraid. The question is long, but the answer is very short. This is a bonus question. Say a small mass is suspended from a long thread so as to form a simple pendulum. The period T of the oscillations depends on the mass M, the length L of the thread, and the acceleration g of free fall at the place concerned. Then we're given this equation t equal to k m raised to power x, l raised to power y, and g raised to power z, where x, y, z are unknown, and k equal to 2 pi. Find the values of x, y, and z. That's all we are asked to do. So anytime you have something like this, let me write this equation back. t equal to k m x l y and g z. First of all, k is a constant, so we are not doing anything with k. For now, just leave k like that. So we want to put all of them in the fundamental quantities, the, the dimension in the dimension. M is already a mass. We don't do anything with mass. Time is already time because we are always relating it to, to MLT, right? Mass, length, and time. So apart from this constant, all we want to have in this equation is M, L, and T. Now, G here is acceleration, right? And you know acceleration, when we are looking for the dimension, We've seen the, as the dimension of acceleration as LT raised to the minus 2. So I'll be replacing that here. So we'll be having T equal to KMX 
L raised to the power Y. Then instead of G now, G, we know G is LT raised to the power minus 2 from the dimension of acceleration. Then there is Z, yeah. Now this same is same thing as saying T equal to K M raised to the power X. L raised to power y. If I open this bracket now, this z will affect everything. So I'll be having L raised to power z, t raised to power minus 2z. Right? Now, if you've done that, this is the same thing as saying t equal to k m raised to power x, y, sorry, L raised to power. Now, check this L. We have two L here. L times L. You take one according to the laws of indices. Since the bases are the same, you take one and you add the powers. So this will be L Y plus Z. Then we have our T raised to power minus 2Z. The next thing you have to do here is just compare coefficients on both sides. Now we have MLT. You have to put MLT on this side, MLT on this side. So what you happen is this same thing is the same thing as saying M L T. Check what I did here. I say m raised to power zero because m raised to power zero is one. L raised to power zero is one. T was the only thing there. So if you multiply everything here, you still have t. But we are doing this to compare coefficients. So here will be k m raised to power x, l raised to power y plus z, and then t raised to power minus two z. So now all you have to do now is to compare coefficient. On this side, m is equal to what? M is raised to power zero. On this side, m is raised to power what? X, right? So since m is raised to power 0 here and m is, equal, is raised to power x here, it means x is equal to 0. Now, check L. L here is equal to 0 and L here is raised to power 0 and L here is raised to power y plus z. So it means y plus z equal to 0. We are just uh, checking the coefficient. Now t here is raised to power 1. There's no power, so it's raised to power 1. So t here is raised to power 1 and t here is raised to power minus 2z. So it means minus 2z equal to what? Equal to 1. Now from here, from minus 2z equal to 1, I can get z here. We've already gotten x as 0. So minus 2z equal to 1. It means z will be equal to 1 over minus 2. Which is what? That's 1 over minus 2. That's minus 1 over 2. Or minus 0 0.5. Now I've gotten x. I've gotten z. To get y now, I've gotten the value of y here, z here. So I can substitute. So I'll be having y plus z is what minus one over two equal to zero so y will be equal to plus one over two because this one is crossing to this other side so i've gotten the value of x as zero i've gotten the value of y as plus one over two and i've gotten the value of z as minus one over two so this is the simple answer to this question is very short just understand it all right this is where i will stop this video if you've not subscribed to my channel do it to click the subscribe button and subscribe so you'll be getting contents like this and if you're having difficulties in any of the subjects any topic drop it in the comment section and i will respond if you learned something i wish you success in any exam you're facing in any of your exams i wish you success if you believe in yourself you will actually succeed if you believe in yourself you actually succeed believe in yourself and ask god to help you so drop in the comment section god please help me drop in the comment section if you watch this video to the end that's how i know people that watch it to the end people that subscribe and people that drop this thing in the comment section now god please help me drop it in the comment section god please help me all right see you in the next video my name is excellence simplified